lot of discussion about VAT rates and trying to align that with other countries in the EU um, to attract more people because sometimes that can put charterers off um, the 21% VAT rate. However, there's certainly a lot of discussion saying that maybe the rest of Europe needs to just harmonize everything, make it a flat rate and then it, it won't have such a big difference. Spain is, and the Middle Eryx in particular, is still a very popular destination. People come for different reasons. Of course, we've got Ibiza and Formentera. Mallorca, it, it draws a totally different crowd and clientele. It's becoming a, a very sort of eco-friendly place. There's a lot of wellness things uh, attracting people as well as obviously our beautiful scenery, underwater, culture. So it's, I think the future is pretty bright for Balearic charter industry. The idea of a recession is definitely on everybody's minds. It can be seen in two ways. And I think we have seen that the, the order book for new builds has certainly been decreasing. However, certainly last year, we've seen an increase in yacht charter. And I think that perhaps people will not be buying a super yacht and be doing maybe more discreet um, charter so it might be positive then again people don't want to be seen to be spending a lot of money um, but very extravagantly so it, it could work both ways the panel were composed of was composed of uh, yacht brokers on a brokerage level on a yacht on a charter brokerage level uh, and the future is difficult to predict, very difficult. We're trying to actually predict a trend in the super yacht business, but there's so many different kinds of input. For instance, are we going to go through another recession? Are we going through a crisis? Um, we've got political problems worldwide. Basically, the Balearic Islands is one of the nicest places, certainly in Europe and in the Western world, for cruising. Uh, we've got all the different islands here, and we've got such a selection of cruising grounds. The problem has always been a little bit about the Spanish bureaucracy and the taxation, which is entirely normal because particularly charter business now is big business and it's quite natural that they have to legislate um, and control the yachting side. But I think Spain has been doing a very good job. Uh, my business personally, we've had a 30% increase every year um, in the number of yachts that are obtaining charter licenses. So um, it's all very positive. I mean, I always see sort of the worldwide economic um, situation. It's a little bit like a weather forecast. You know, you've got um, high pressure and low pressures, and the uh, high pressures go and fill in the low pressures, and I always think that that is sort of like the, the world economics. Potential recession, maybe there will, maybe there won't. But in previous occasions, uh, the recession hasn't particularly affected the super yacht um, side of it. In fact, the rich people have been made even richer during the recessions. So it shouldn't really affect the super yacht business. It may affect the way some people want to be discreet and they don't particularly want to be publicly seen buying multi, multi-million dollar super yachts. So they will probably go and enjoy their yachting time chartering yachts in the Caribbean on a discreet level. But it shouldn't really make any difference. But you've got to remember that super yachting is actually a leisure industry. Uh, you know, it's a leisure. It's the people who are the top um, movers in the world economically, but the super yachts are their form of vacation and, and of relaxation. It's not necessarily a business.